Welcome back. Uh, for those of you just joining us, we are Hard Factor. We have a, also have a podcast you should check out on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, or wherever the fuck podcasts are. It's Monday through Friday. It comes up before you wake up. It gives you like 30 to 40 minutes of news every day, so you're slightly informed. So check that out. Today we have a very special debate. It is the second ever Barstool debate. You might remember KB and Nick were on last week. This week we have the host of the popular podcast, Schnitt Talk, and the final boss of Sorority Girl Twitter, Barstool's own Ellie Schnitt. How are you doing? Okay, how are you doing? Great, doing great. Thanks for joining. And her opponent today is the vape god and leader of the mommy gang, Tommy Smokes. How you doing, Tommy? I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I, I thought that the first part was going to be me for a second. Final boss of secure, sorority girl Twitter. I thought you were going to maybe that me and then Ellie would be the other one. But this makes more sense this way. Yeah, discourse already. I like this. Okay. You're, wor you're working your way up there. If it wasn't Ellie... That actually might have that might have played. Like second place. Yeah, yeah. Ellie, what does that what does that mean? Final boss of sorority girl tour. I think I get it. Well, it doesn't. There was someone was making fun of me like three years ago on one of my tweets and was like, "Is this like the final boss of sorority girl Twitter?" And I was like, "Yeah, that is what I am." That, did you yeah, shut her down? Yeah. No, I never responded to her. I just put it in my bio and yeah, you just lean into that. That's an amazing title. Also, it's really I good. Yeah, I always kind of assumed you just named yourself that, but I guess yeah. it, it's better that it's, that like. <laughs> somebody Much else said. better that i didn't name myself yeah. That. oh yeah, yeah it's always be good to be given a nickname uh, i mean it, Ellie, it would, it would freak me out if i was a sorority girl i'll tell you that like i wouldn't mess with you because well because you're the final boss you know what i mean like i don't want to fuck and i'm not good at video games like right okay that's a good point it's intimidating yeah well did you have anything there or do you want, do you want i was to gonna ask a question to ellie um okay. for, nice meeting you by the way oh, yeah, uh, nice meeting. yeah uh but <laughs> does anybody ever call you holly i was i was wondering that yes PFT yeah. called me Holly, like the first time you ever talked to me. Yeah. Why? Why is that? Because People mix I, it because holy schnit, like, yeah, and then it, but it's like, yeah. can you like? I, my name is. I mean, Ellie is literally my name on Twitter. Hmm. I don't, right. People, People don't call. Know. People call me Mike because I guess Mike and Mark are similar. I don't get it. But I am the moderator. Don't let the Eagles jersey uh, confuse you. This will be the first time that someone in Eagles jersey is moderating anything ever. I can still, uh, I have the right to insult anyone. I just can't pour beer on you through Zoom. So it's, it's going to be, it's going to be fine. Um, we, we flipped a coin. So the way this works is we do three rounds. You guys are familiar with the first two rounds. We told you what you're going to be debating the first two rounds. You'll each get two minutes to debate and then you'll have a one minute rebuttal. So it'll go two minutes, two minutes, one, one. Two minutes, two minutes, one, one in the second round, and then a one minute Wait, bonus you, round. That which, two, two, do one, one, one. So the first round, each of you gets two minutes, right? And it'll go, we flipped a coin. Ellie's going to go first. She'll get two minutes. Then Tommy's going to get two minutes. And then Ellie has one minute to like do a final rebuttal with no interruption. You guys can kind of interrupt in the two minute part. And that's how round one and two go. So it's two minutes each, and then one minute each per round. And then the third round, you have no fucking clue what we're going to ask. Surprise. You. The prize round, round you, have, yeah. you just have one minute total because we don't expect you to ramble on for four minutes, three minutes on that. All right, let's get it started. Like I said, Ellie flipped the coin. She's going first. And round number one is what is the best location for a first date? Where would you like to be at a first date? Yeah, I, I'm starting. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Two minutes starts now. That's now. Well, like, now it's a buck now. 55. Mm -hmm. so your time is ticking. The more that I now, can make, time I have, the less time I have. Now, That's minute right. 50 now. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, I'm starting. Okay, I'm starting. Um, okay, <laughs> the best place you can ever go on a first date. Keep it simple. Drinks. No dinner. Only drinks. And here's why: you don't know if you're actually gonna like this person on a first date. You do not ever want to be stuck somewhere that you can't make an easy escape. With drinks, it's like you have one drink. You say, you know what? I gotta go. I've got stuff to do. I have laundry. I have something I gotta finish up at work. If you're at dinner, you have to wait for the dinner to come. And if you don't like the person, you just sit there awkwardly through the date. Sometimes people are like, do an activity, go mini golfing, go to a basketball game or something. Over my dead body, I do not want to be stuck with someone just in case I don't like them. And the good thing with drinks is if you do like them, get another drink, get appetizers, get something, go somewhere else. Like it's super easy for it to either be very short or very long, depending on how much you like that person. That's what she said. All right. Uh, Ellie's relenting her time. Tommy, you got two minutes. Well, fuck that. <laughs> Was that may that was going to be? You were going to say drinks for a first date? No way. T Tommy, have you ever been on a first date? Yeah, I mean, drinks okay. is like the only thing that you could possibly do. I feel okay. like I'm, no, I'm not going to fucking argue Ellie's point. So now I gotta, I gotta just yeah, you gotta I, find the opposite, Tommy. Right, I have to go on something else. All right, so I'm gonna say uh, just drinks. That's uh, bad because yeah. you know <laughs> because you know you should commit to an entire meal at a an interesting place 
at a uh, maybe hibachi. Hibachi, all right, so hibachi mm. place, and then you get other people at your table. That way, if you don't like, you know, the girl you're with, you got other people there to mix it up with, you know, so you don't have to be just so focused on her the entire time. You kind of get a group setting. Uh, you know, the hibachi chef, he's going to fling zucchini and shit into your mouth. That's always yeah. fun. If you catch that, it's impressive. If you don't, you'll laugh it off. You'd be self-deprecating. So it's kind of a win-win situation either way. Um, you know, you get some alcohol there. I'm pretty sure the fire blows. They do a volcano. That's very romantic. Campfires are very romantic. Onions mm -hmm. with hot flames between them, also extremely romantic kind yeah. of. Uh, drinks, that's boring. Everybody and their mother, oh, let's go. Let's go get a bar. Let's get drinks. I'm going to get a drink. You get a drink. Blah, 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 blah. There's no, there's no flair there. There's no excitement. Go to a hibachi restaurant, get something unique. You know, Ellie, how many first dates have you been on where, you know, you get, you get a drink with someone, they're forgettable. But if you went over on a first date with someone and got hibachi, you'd probably remember that. Good, pretty good argument. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is this, a, is this, is this a vegan hibachi place? They're tossing zucchini instead of shrimp in your mouth. Is that what I heard? No, it's a regular hibachi. I don't know. They always toss zucchini into my mouth. Okay. Uh, mm, uh, right. That might say something about you, though, Tom. <laughs> okay, that, yeah. All right, yeah. Ellie, you have one minute for closing remarks here. Uh, look, to my opponent, all I'm going to say is, sure, I think you're making a great argument for going to hibachi, hibachi restaurants. I mean, your entire argument was how fun hibachi restaurants are. Sounds you know, delicious. Talk about, the first date yeah, I would love to go there, but do I want to go there on a first date? It's a lot of commitment to say, you know what, I'm going to go somewhere where I'm going to smell like this restaurant for the rest of my night. For my clothes might smell like it, got to wash these clothes. What if I didn't want to wash these jeans, you know? A lot of commitment to do that with someone. Also, it's fucking embarrassing when you can't catch the shrimp or whatever in your mouth. Why would you want to do that in front of someone that you don't even know that you're trying to impress? Um, overall, I would say drinks is the safest, smartest, most uh, adaptable option. All right, Tommy, wow. you, get, you get one minute. Yeah, I feel like Ellie, is, Ellie might have taken a speech class because well, that, that was. I mean, listen, she's talking about oh, you know, <laughs> you just admitted that hibachi is fun. A first date should be fun. You got plenty of time to get to know each other while you also have some fun. As far as the food going into the mouth, yeah, you know what? You can't be perfect on a first date, but that's good. Show look, I'm human. Maybe I can catch food in my mouth. There's faults to me. There's layers mm. to me. You should get that out of the way first. Show that you're vulnerable. And then as for the smell thing, like. You're both gonna smell like that, so it doesn't real. It's like you're not even gonna know who smells like who. So you both smell like that. You It'll mark your scent, like, basically. Okay. Yeah, like, you have that uh, scent, and then other people will be pointing at you when you leave. You're mm -hmm. like, they smell. That's cute. Already got like a little something to bond over. So drinks, sure. As of four minutes ago, was that gonna be my answer? Yes. <laughs> but you know what? I adapted on the fly. I switched to hibachi, and I think I made a pretty goddamn convincing argument of why you should be unique and not do what every other person in the world does for a first date. I feel like you got to wow. be adaptable, adaptable on the first date. It is tough to catch an entire zucchini in the mouth. I yeah. Yeah. You can't do the whole zucchini. Well, wow. That was, that was, that was, that was intense. I, I'm totally, we're going to save the judging until the end, but I, I'm right now. I don't know. I don't know. What I'm, th you, I'm thinking about, thinking about divorcing my wife so I can go on some first dates. I know. Right. <laughs> yeah. Terrible. Yeah. But you, you'd right, have to pay. It's yeah, a whole other terrible. expense. And honestly, right. I don't know. I'm still up. My mind is so frozen right now. I don't. I don't know which one I do. Drinks or hibachi? That was a great, great debate for the first round. Roll. I'll, I'll role play. I'll role play the first date. All right, round two. So Tommy goes first this time. We're gonna go with. No, I don't know what Tommy's gonna pick on this one. We're gonna go. What's, <laughs> what is the best reality TV show and why? Tommy, oh, you never heard of American? No, I'm just kidding. Obviously, it's gonna be Survivor. You, you, you. This was a layup for me. Now listen, there's a lot of, I almost don't even want to say Survivor because I don't want to admit that it's reality TV because it, it's, it's so far above reality TV. It's not reality TV, it's competition TV. First of all, it's, it's the first real reality show. So it has that going for it. It's lasted 20 years, 40 seasons. It's going to beat out any other thing you throw out there. And also, it, there's no fake drama to it. Jersey Shore, Bachelor, Real World. I don't know. I don't, I don't watch any other reality shows, but I feel like there's a lot of other fake drama and stuff, producers getting in here. Survivor, it's all real because there's real incentives. There's $1 million waiting at the end of that tunnel. You also, which is, you know, better than a lot of other prizes. Bachelor, you get like a girlfriend or a uh, boyfriend. Fuck that. I'd rather have a million dollars. And then you also, uh, you know, you have the title of Soul Survivor, which I almost care about more than winning Survivor, uh, more than the million dollars. I just want to be able to say that I won Survivor. So it's a competitive show. There's lying, there's backstabbing, there's physical challenges. If you're into that, you know, you can see obstacle courses and stuff every week. It's a mental game though. It's a social experiment. It's 16 to 20 Americans lying, backstabbing each other for 39 days while under the harshest conditions, really pushing you to your limit. And, you know, seeing where you can go as a human being, digging deep 
and saying, I can do this. I can pull this out. There is no, nothing better. It's entertaining. You know, you got, if, uh, if you're looking for like sex appeal, they're on a beach. So you got 30 seconds. You got bikinis for TNA. You got uh, shirtless guys for abs and stuff. So there, there's that appeal to it as well. Jeff Probst <laughs> is the best in the business at hosting this. He, he runs a tight ship. Uh, he makes sure everything runs smoothly, asks great questions. There is no more entertaining show. Everybody stopped watching it 10 years ago where they say, oh, it's this, it's that. Ten it's seconds, Tommy. It's a survival show. It is, at the end of the day, it's a social, it's a social experiment and is the best competition ever known to mankind. All right. Whoa, could, okay. Could you, wow. Could you imagine dropping the line that you won Survivor at the Hibachi restaurant on the first date? Talk about lay, <laughs> talk about that. talk about you layups. You know that already. I would think <laughs> if you knew that right. before the Hibachi Ooh. restaurant. You're that's not paying for sake that night, that's for no. sure. All right, Ellie, two minutes. Oh, God, I don't even know how I can go up against that. Um, you can't. All right, so I don't watch a lot of reality. Honestly, I watched The Bachelor for the first time this year. It was pretty deep. But here's what I'll say. The best reality show is Love Island. Love Island is the most re ridiculous dating show you will ever watch in your life. And I mean that because I'm talking, you know, Love is Blind on Netflix, all of that stuff. No, no, Love Island because they're- The British. accents, yeah, the accents. You yeah. cannot understand, you have to have the subtitles on, can't understand the fucking words. <laughs> they introduce all this slang that you've never heard in your entire life that you start using, your friends start using, it becomes a whole thing. You know, they're using the English language in ways that it's never been used before. Everyone's blackout drunk, everyone's attractive, everyone is making out, fighting, I don't know, crying in the corner. It is so entertaining and it is on every single day. You are Ooh. never going to get enough of it because it's on every single day and, uh, you know, it's not manufactured because they don't have enough time to manufacture a storyline. They don't have enough time to be like, here's what we're going to do. They're just editing it like every single day. Um, I'm a really big fan and I don't like reality. So the fact that I like this, I think says a lot. Whoa, Fair okay. Enough. Tommy, good there argument. No Tommy, Tommy one, one minute left. You're, you're beginning now. There you go. That, you're starting it off right there. Go well, ahead. What did Ellie describe to you? She described a dating show where people get drunk and they fight and stuff. I could name 10 different shows like that. You could, Love Island, what's the difference between Love Island and Temptation Island and the real world? I don't know. Nobody knows. They're all the same thing. You don't confuse Survivor with anything else. Survivor is the most unique show mm -hmm. of its ilk. There's nothing that's even close to it. You have other survival shows, but you know, there's no strategy behind it. You have other, other strategy shows, but it doesn't have that survival aspect of being outside. The real world, or what show did you say? I don't even remember. That's because it's forgettable. Like all of these other television shows, very similar to that. They all run into each other. They probably got all these young hot guys, these young hot girls, and obnoxious host yelling shit all the time. It's all the same. It doesn't stand out. And Ellie knows that deep down. She knows that in her heart of hearts. Uh, hot people are so <laughs> hot people are so annoying. All right, Ellie, one minute. Um, here's the thing. There are a lot of dating shows. I'll give you that. But to be the best dating show, some things just have that it factor, Tommy. And Love Island has it. It's kind wow, of like, exactly. how do you describe pornography? You know, you, you can't describe it, but you know it when you see it. Mm. Love Island well, has that You that could thing. describe pornography, to be clear. Un, un, the difference un, yeah, it's the best. And a naked piece of, just like an art of someone naked or an art of two people having sex in a movie or something. You can't describe it, but you know the difference between pornography and that. You know the difference between a bad dating show and the pinnacle of all dating shows the pinnacle of all reality shows, which is Love Island. That's okay. all. Right. All right. I've, no I've noticed if anyone's listening to the show, uh, if you do take Ellie out on a date, you better not be a recovering alcoholic. She likes the drinks. She likes the shows with the drinks. Don't be, don't be, well, you a, might don't be, be a nerd. Yeah, yeah Ellie, would, Ellie would be a trigger, <laughs> be a drunk, so to speak. A drunk, Brit, a drunk Brit has a pretty good chance, it sounds like. Um, all right. Last round. Uh, you guys don't know what's coming. This is going to be a surprise. And Elliot, it's back to you to go first. You have one minute total, and then we're going to judge who won this debate. Uh, what is the best holiday and why? Elliot, one minute. God, I don't fucking know. Um, Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday mm. because it's a holiday completely about, well, you know, if you take out the part where it's like a bad holiday because it's celebrating someone who murdered a bunch of indigenous people, whatever. Um, just the food aspect, the family aspect, and the thankfulness aspect, it, it's a beautiful holiday. You know, you get to see your family that you maybe, you don't get to see them that often. You know, I live in New York City. My family's all in the Midwest, so it's nice for me to come home and be able to see my family. It's a good excuse. Good excuse to have some time off work. Good excuse to watch some football. Great excuse to drink some beer. Great excuse to, 
deep fry a turkey. I don't know. It's a, it's a good holiday. I'm, I would say of the holidays, you don't have to go to any kind of religious place for it. It's just about food and fun and family. Hmm. Okay. Were you confusing Columbus Day there? I don't think. No, the, I don't yeah, think we're that, that, okay, did, we, did we do? Did we do the blanket thing? I don't. I don't know. No, Thanksgiving is problematic, but that's okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. But we All threw right. that out. It's not it's, about that. It's, it's twenty twenty. I mean, everything's yeah. got got some sort of baggage now. So, All right, yeah. Tommy. One minute. Yeah. So I just want to know what is Ellie's least favorite part about Native Americans? Because it's clear that you. Oh man. Oh, wow. So I'm not going to go with something. So, Racy, I'm going to go with Christmas, which I know it's religious. Not everybody celebrates it. <laughs> That's Straight to Christmas. Not everybody <laughs> celebrates it. But you know what? Uh, it's a great holiday. And even if you're not Catholic or Christian, you you sell, everyone knows Christmas. You give gifts. It's about giving. It's about family. It's, you know, Christmas, it's more than just a day. It's a, whole, it's a whole entire season, to be quite frank with you. Um, you know, it's 25 days Christmas movies, Christmas cookies, Christmas music, it's, you know, it's more than just the day. The day itself, it's fine. But that whole, ho that whole season is encapsulated in that holiday. And you know what? Yeah, all right. Not everybody believed Jesus, whatever, died and shit. But at the end of the day, everybody loves Christmas. They love getting gifts. They love giving gifts. They love being with their family. They love watching Elf. They love, uh, you know, Yuletide logs and whatnot and, and eating some gingerbread cookies, making gingerbread houses. It's just the most wonderful time of the year. I wasn't even, I didn't even do that. I, I, yeah, it's the song too, but whatever. The Christmas tree, it's just an absolutely magnificent time of the year. And no Native American has got to make it happen. Okay. So yeah, not everyone can get into heaven, but everyone loves giving gifts and getting gifts. So yeah, mm -hmm. that makes sense. Right? And nobody's right. offended by Christmas. We all know no. that. <laughs> no, yeah. No not triggers there. About it. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> guys. Hey guys, that was a fantastic. Give yeah, yourselves a round of applause. That was really that was, a pat on the back. Yeah, that was nice good. work. I, really, yeah. Hats off. Yeah. Great debate. Now, one great technique too. One that was some of the better. Yeah, that's true. Tec one yeah, technique. I won the argument season one. Um, Did you? Based on my debating, yeah. Okay, so oh, wow. the winner, the winner of this is moving on, and uh, the winner bracket so far is KB. Um, Nick is in the loser bracket. We're going to do a consolation thing too. But let's get the judging starting. Will uh, started. Will, what did you think about round one? Who won? Why? Well, uh, I I gotta say I was impressed with Tommy's adaptability there because uh, he really you know made some solid points about the liquor squirts. You know the, the sake squirts in your mouth. It made me think about getting squ sake squirted in my mouth, which is fun. Also, the marking your scent on your date argument with it, that that kind of threw me off a little bit and then it really made me appreciate uh ellie's argument of being able to get out of that encounter whenever you wanted to so i gave the round to ellie okay <laughs> okay oh that's tough uh yeah no i mean i definitely i i see ellie's point about smelling like hibachi uh, on a first date and you don't want that and tommy countered by saying well you're both going to smell like hibachi so that's good but what if you don't want to be with that person you know what I mean? Like, what if you want to get out of that date, which is what Ellie's champion championing, which is escape. And then on your next date, I know sometimes the ladies line them up all night. You're, you're the hibachi chick. At the, and I also feel like Tommy might be getting paid by big hibachi because it was just, it kind of came out of nowhere and he was really, I'm, it's going to Ellie. I'm sorry. You got to admire though. You got to admire though. The fact that I was able to even make it a debate with hibachi. Versus I mean, I love hibachi, Tommy. I love well, hibachi, but it's it's it's, it's <laughs> gonna be a, it's gonna be a clean sweep for Ellie there because if the first date's hibachi, what the fuck is the second date? Well, gonna? right. I know. But Only yeah, down the, from there. The commitment <laughs> to like wanting complete commitment in your first date. I mean, I liked I liked that. You, it was an interesting. What are you skydiving on the second date? All right, yeah. round round one goes to Ellie. Round two, uh, Pat. Who 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 and why? Who won okay. So. This is tough because I know Tommy loves Survivor and made some really good points, but he made some also wrong points, saying that Survivor was the first reality TV show. It was not. Uh, oh, he said really? there's no no other show like it. That's not true. Big Brother, very similar, Big brother very, sim house, not on very similar format. A very similar format. Um, um, settings also. Uh, that's uh, only people are for elimination. Big, Big Brother's nothing like Survivor. No. On the Big same. On the Survivor for the brainless. Yeah, on the same side, Ellie really uh, didn't sell me on Love Island. Um, I did like that the people get blackout drunk there because uh, that's always fun to watch. And I did like the slang elements, uh, but ultimately I got to go with Tommy on this one because he's right. The, the title of Survivor is really unbeatable. That's the biggest prize you can win on television. Therefore, right. 
Pat gives it to Tommy. Will, who do you got round two? Uh, I'm also going the same way, but I have some different reasonings. I, I, liked, I liked Ellie's reasoning that it's, Love Island is also educational on top of being entertaining, which is like, it's that, that adds another layer to those dating shows. But to Tommy's point, a lot of dating shows now. I mean, you know, I've probably too much. It drowns it out, makes it noisy. And so it made it easy for Tommy to come in with the passion, so much passion about Survivor. I mean, I find somebody that loves you like Tommy Smokes loves Survivor, you, you know, because I mean, you, yeah, I don't know if it exists. That is a pure love. And uh, just for that passion, I got to go, Tommy. Hey, yeah. Ellie, where, where is Love Island? Uh, I believe it's Majorca. Okay, because I, yeah, I hadn't heard of this thing until now. But, yeah, I, I mean, it, it's a, it's I'm a cool. Sorry, I'm saying where it's filmed, but it's you can watch it on Hulu. And I'm doing a little research here. I got my night, my night carved out. Watch for season four or season five; those are the best two. Which I will. I see. I would much rather watch Love Island than Survivor, but it's a clean sweep for Tommy. Uh, I had to like stop him multiple times. He would have gone on for way more than two minutes. It'd be uh, like Tom, again, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Tommy wins round two. So, it also uh, made me want to go start training. Which like so I was like motivated, you know, and I, I could. Yeah, use I wanted it. to run through a brick wall. Like you spoke for two minutes straight, uninterrupted, like just fact after fact. It was like Survivor. a thesis statement. Has yeah. anyone has anyone that works on Survivor got in touch with you or anything? Like, I don't, it's a source. I I've tried many times. There there's some wheels in motion, but the yeah. co next couple seasons are are delayed for because of co uh, Corona. So yeah, Tommy, so I, I happen really I personally know I know a Survivor winner. I can connect you. We can get that sure. conversation going. The guy from Wimberley. Uh, I forget his first name, but I've hung out from, with him a bunch. From Wimberley, w Texas. Wimberley, Texas. He's a sole survivor. He, yeah, Pollard? he's a sole survivor. Mike? Could be. Okay. I think so. Are you look it up. up Pat? Okay. No, okay. no, no, no. I've hung with the guy. Don't, you don't you've know hung him with well. him. You don't, don't know, know him well. Him. Yeah, yeah, but I, you know, I, I can get in touch. Don't worry. <laughs> All, right. Okay. All right. Last round. Uh, we're going to go back to Pat. Who do you have for the winner of round three? And really the winner because uh, whoever gets two votes out of three here or more wins. Yeah, this is super tough. This was yeah. a really tough one. This is a really tough one. So, um, Best holiday and why? I know. Ellie went Thanksgiving. Tom went Christmas. I like that Ellie prefaced her ex explanation for Thanksgiving saying, hey, I know this is problematic, but let's focus on the positive because I think that's what we need to do these days, right? It's like we can't, we can't just not enjoy the 25th of November or whatever it is, or 28th, uh, not wow. watch football, not drink beer. She also brought up fried turkey, which is one of my favorite foods. I'm going with Ellie Schnitt on the best holiday being Thanksgiving. So Pat hates Native Americans. Everybody mark that down. Well, Tommy, you hate too, so. What? No. Oh. <laughs> okay. Look at all this. Best religion, go. Best <laughs> <laughs> religion. All right, well, who do you, who do you have winning? Ah, oh, shit. I. Uh, I was going to go with Ellie, but I'm going to put it on Mark to, to decide the oh, winner. Wow. So, Tommy, Tommy, Tommy gets it. That is not very fair to Ellie because <laughs> my favorite holiday happens to be Christmas. Wow. My holiday is Christmas. I love, love, love Christmas. I, I do not, I'm not religious. I do not go to church, but I fucking love Christmas. I wish Christmas was all year round. I love the music. I love the movies. I'm sorry, I get the spirit. I didn't know that was happening. <laughs> no. I love Christmas. So that I was, was doing it for the well, drama. I, and I did not Tommy know. Backdoor wins the debate. <laughs> 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 wow. I, I threw that away for you. I'm sorry. It, it, you did have a better argument with football. Wow. No, but, if yeah. it makes Ellie feel any better, I think overall I won. Like, I think overall, if you look out. Uh, no, I, I literally just threw the match for her. She would have won if I had just wow. said yeah, I like, like, well, I think I if you look at all three it. rounds objectively, I think I won. I'll say that you kind of won. This is an yeah. asterisk. I'm sorry about that. I that was going was, for drama. And, that, uh, was, uh, that was some tough judging there in the last round. You, you guys are good. Yeah. You guys are really – that was some of the best, like, technical debating we've seen on this show, and I'm, that was impressive. That was a very good debate. Uh, no audio issues like the uh, Anus boys who are sharing a screen. Yeah, um, Ellie, more than that, they were sharing. Really, you're, you're going to destroy Nick when you see him in the con. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice! I can't do that. <laughs> All right, well, you guys, great debate. Uh, Tommy, you're moving on to the winner bracket. I think that it's probably going to be like the semifinals. I think we'll have like uh, eight eight different rounds, and then we'll move on to the semis. The four final four, you'll probably face off against KB, and then if you win that, you get to the finals. That'll be like probably. Mm -hmm. 
three or four weeks from now when we move on to the next round. Uh, we are Hard Factor. If you're, if you're just joining or you don't know who we are, we have a Monday through Friday podcast on all the places you can get podcasts. We give you the news, uh, the U.S. news, the global news. We try to have a funny spin because the news is insane. Um, and, yeah, so you can get slightly informed. It comes out in the mornings. Thank you, Tommy. Thank you, Ellie. Uh, up next is the Yak, so stay tuned. Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.